In this video, we're gonna teach you everything you need to know to get started on Resto Druid in Cata Classic. You're gonna learn the best race, the best talents, glyphs, gear, professions, and of course, macros to get you instantly ahead of the competition. Okay, so before we start, if you want a fresh UI for Cata using our brand new Skillcapped add-on, be sure to check out our updated classic site at skillcapped.com. We've got literally everything you need to make sure you don't fall behind in the latest expansion, including specialized guides at your fingertips from rank one players, which will teach you exactly what you need to master your class. From maximizing damage to mastering CC and more, everything is covered. And while everyone else is going to be slowly figuring everything out themselves, you can skip this process with Skillcat quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so, in fact, that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. So join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Let's kick things off at the character select screen, where it's time to choose your race. Night Elf is by far the best race for Resto Druid in Cataclysm, Shadow Meld is one of the most dynamic racials ever in PvP, especially as a healer. Now, our smartest viewers are going to know by now that Shadow Meld can be used to avoid CC or even completely immune any incoming projectiles from Frost Bolts to Death Coils and even instant abilities like Blind. Shadow Meld's going to also instantly drop combat, allowing you to re-stealth for a stun or sit down to drink. Sometimes slipping into the shadows is a strong defensive in its own, as the temporary target drop can prevent enemy players from attacking, even if it's just for a few milliseconds to spare you that extra bit of time. Night Elf is also sleeper OP because of quickness, which adds a very small chance for attacks to miss, and that even includes CC. For Horde, Tauren is by far your best option. Now, although weaker overall, War Stomp is still a pretty good active ability for Druids, as it can be comboed together with Cyclone for a small CC chain. Tauren also has some bonus HP, which is quite useful as a Resto Druid since you're a common target in Arena. But again, if you want to be optimal, just stick to Night Elf. Talents work slightly differently in Cataclysm, so let's break down everything that you need to know to get going. First up, you'll need to spend 31 points into the Resto Tree before putting any points in Balance or Feral. On screen right now, we have our recommended build for Season 9, and we know that you might be confused by some of the choices, so let's just break it down for you. Towards the top of the tree, you might have noticed we only have one point in Revitalize. Now, for the most part, you shouldn't have any severe mana issues in Arena, especially when you get your hands on some trinkets, so putting two talent points here is a bit overkill in PvP. That's also why we only have one point in Malfurion's Gift. Devoting two talent points here is a bit overkill too, since mana really isn't an issue, and Omen of Clarity only affects casted healing spells, not our hots. Moving down the tree, we've only got one point into Nature's Ward, an extra point here isn't needed since the passive already gives a 50% chance to auto-apply rejuvenation at low HP, and since you're likely to get hit multiple times while low anyway, it's guaranteed to proc often. Your true flexibility comes from these three talents here, where we can adjust our magic damage reduction, regrowth crit chance, and our GCD on rejuvenation. Here we've gone with a mix of all three, and there isn't really an obvious best build. If you're super confident you won't die into casters, you could drop the final point in Perseverance for extra crit chance on regrowth and vice versa. And for Season 9, we would recommend specking into Swift Rejuvenation no matter what, since the lower GCD can help offset limited haste values in the early expansion. Looking at the balance tree, we actually have one of our most important abilities here, Nature's Grace. If you watch our Resto Druid course at skillcap.com, you're going to find out just how powerful this passive truly is, and knowing how to min-max it is honestly a crucial part of climbing. So you'll also see that we've only put one point into Balance of Power, turning 50% of our spirit into Spell Hit. Since we only need 4% rating in PvP, there's no reason to go beyond this with the amount of spirit on gear already. Finally, on the Feral Tree, you're going to notice we've only put one point into Furrer. 
This is done to guarantee we'll always have enough energy to skull bash when shifting into cat form. Now, along with talents, the glyph system has changed slightly in Cataclysm as well. Now you'll have three additional prime glyph slots on top of major and minor. For Resto, you have three obvious choices, Rejuvenation, Swiftmend, and Life Bloom. Glyph of Swiftmend is a massive quality of life improvement, saving you valuable mana and GCDs over the course of a game. Now beyond this, the extra healing on Rejuve and higher crit chance on Life Bloom will simply give you more consistent HPS. And while it might be tempting, avoid using Glyph of Regrowth since its hot effect really isn't that valuable. For major glyphs, you're once again locked into three choices as well. Orc Skin, Fairy Fire, and Entangling Roots. Here, Glyph of Barkskin is definitely MVP. As a Resto Druid, you're very vulnerable to getting trained, so having a mini Roar of Sacrifice tied to your only defensive is a huge bonus. Now beyond this, the other two Glyph options provide slightly less impact. Fairy Fire is exceptionally good against Rogues and other Druids, and the extra range can allow you to avoid gap closers against these classes. Glyph of Innervate was reworked in Kata and only works when Innervate is used on a friendly player other than yourself. So this is only situationally good in RBGs because for the most part, you're going to be Innervating yourself inside of Arena. The only other potentially good option is Glyph of Pounce, which you could use in 2v2, especially when playing with a caster like a Mage or a Warlock. No matter what though, avoid playing without Glyph of Barkskin. As the name suggests, minor glyphs really aren't nearly as important, but Dash and Mark of the Wild are the only choices that actually provide impact in Arena. Now, if you really want to min-max, Glyph of Challenging Roar can also provide impact, since it can be used to AoE taunt pets inside of Arena. Okay, so before we continue, we have an exclusive skill cap tip to help you get started in Kata PvP, coming directly from our new classic course. Most players typically think that being good at PvP means becoming a pro at juking and fake casting, but one of the biggest brain plays you can make as a Resto Druid is actually tanking a kick. This seems backwards at first, we get it, but let us explain. So as a fair warning, this is going to mostly apply to situations where you're playing with a high tier caster, which means Shadow Priests, Fire Mages, Frost Mages, and Affliction Warlocks. Most of your best comps will be with these specs in 3v3. Now, it's vital to understand that Casted Damage and Chain CC are actually quite broken in Cataclysm, which means interrupts can be pretty disruptive to your team's damage or CC. But as a hop-based healer, your healing output isn't really affected much by a single interrupt, since your healing will continue to roll during the lockout anyway. Now, because of this, there is an incentive for you to unintentionally tank a kick with Cyclone on an off DPS, assuming your partners can win the game with the ability to free cast. Of course, it would be better for you to juke an interrupt, but by committing to the full cast of your Cyclone, you create a win-win situation here. Either you get kicked, and now your partners can free cast, or you don't get kicked, and now someone's Cyclone, also allowing your partners to free cast. With this single adaptation, you will completely elevate your gameplay when playing with Wizards. If you want to learn more tips like these, then check out our brand new class courses at skillcap.com by using the links below. Alrighty, next up, let's go over your best in-slot gear for Season 9, which is going to start with your stat priority. Ideally, you're going to want as much intellect as possible, and then hit a few breakpoints, getting 4% spell hit, which you're going to get from Spirit, and at least 195 spell pin, which you'll get automatically with an epic PvP cloak. Then aim for at least 12.5% haste, followed by at least 3,000 resilience. From here, get as much mastery as you can, followed by spirit and then crit. Now for some specific details here. The reason we want 12% haste is because it's gonna give you an extra tick on life bloom and rejuvenation. The next breakpoints are 15% for your second additional life bloom tick, and then 37.5% for an additional rejuve. And as you can tell, this is a pretty big jump. Keep in mind that Shadow Priest will give you 5% haste with Mind Quickening, so you should try and get the 12.5% haste breakpoint if you aren't playing with one on your team. 
Before we show you your best in slot, be sure to check out our article site after the video for your pre-bis gear using the link in the description below. Now, let's take a look at what items you should aim to get as the season progresses. In Season 9, the overwhelming majority of your best in slot gear will come from PvP. Your main pieces will consist of the vicious Gladiator's Kodahide helmet, shoulder, chest, and gloves, and then you'll use the Wormhide leggings since they provide mastery. Your off pieces will include the Vicious Gladiator's Drape of Diffusion to get your spell penetration. Your bracers should be the Bindings of Meditation. Then you're going to also use the Meditation Belt and the Alacrity Foot Guards. For your weapons, use the Vicious Gladiator's Spellblade or Heroic Incineratus from Blackwing Descent. Your offhand should then be the Vicious Reprieve. And then use the Relic of Salvation in your extra slot. For your jewelry, get the Alacrity Neck Piece. And then for your first ring, get the Vicious Gladiator's Band of Meditation, and then ideally the Signet of the Fifth Circle from Cho Gaul in the Bastion of Twilight. If you can't do any of the PvE, then use the Band of Cruelty for your second ring slot. Finally, for your trinkets, use the Vicious Gladiator's Medallion of Prowess or Tenacity, and then buy the Dark Moon card Tsunami from the Auction House. If you can manage to get a Heroic Shard of Woe from Bastion of Twilight, it should replace the Tsunami Trinket, where it's going to be best in slot until Season 11. When it comes to reforging, your goal is to stick to your caps and reforge any spirit into haste or mastery, depending on your breakpoint needs. For instance, if you're below 12.5% haste, you should aim to reforge spirit to haste first, and then beyond that, you can start thinking about reforging into mastery. So with all your gear sorted, let's get everything gemmed and enchanted. Your best enchants are not going to change as the expansion progresses. Your helmet and shoulder enchants will both come from PvP and will be the Arcanum and Greater Inscription of Vicious Intellect. These are both acquired with honor. Then head to the Auction House where you'll pick up the rest of your enchants, including Greater Intellect on your cloak, Mighty Resilience on your chest, Mighty Intellect on bracers, Haste on gloves, and then Lava Walker on boots. For the remaining slots, embellish your legs with powerful ghostly spell thread, and then put power torrent on your weapon, and then superior intellect on your offhand, assuming you have one. Finally, don't forget to get an even steel belt buckle for an extra gym slot. And speaking of which, let's get things gymmed. For your meta socket, you have two options, Ember or Burning Shadow Spirit Diamond. We would probably recommend playing with the extra mana in most cases, but you really can't go wrong with either choice. Then in red sockets, use Willful Ember Topaz, assuming you're below your resilience breakpoint, in which case you could instead use Brilliant Inferno Rubies or Reckless Ember Topaz to hit your haste breakpoint. In the blue sockets, use Purified Demon's Eye. And then in yellow sockets, put Mystic Amber Jewels, which, again, should help you get your Resilience Breakpoint. Professions will matter once more in Cataclysm, and there are a few obvious choices. Overall, your best two professions are Blacksmithing and Jewel Crafting, since they both offer flat increases to stats. Blacksmiths get an additional gem socket on their bracer and gloves, while Jewel Crafters get exclusive epic gems. The reason why this profession combo is ideal is because it's going to give you consistent increased healing all the time instead of proc-based benefits. Now, there are some alternative options, including Tailoring, which offers a proc-based cloak enchant, or Herbalism, which is a good budget-friendly option, which grants an ability called Lifeblood. The advantage of both of these options is they allow you to snapshot powerful hots, while the disadvantage being that they're far less consistent than blacksmithing and jewel crafting. Finally, let's wrap things up with every macro that you're going to need to be competitive in PvP. First up, you're going to want to focus macros for Cyclone, Entangling Roots, Bash, Kick, and Fairy Fire. If you have extra keybind space and want to be a little bit more optimal, you can then go ahead to make separate macros for Arena 1, 2, 3 for Cyclone. Next, Roots, let's go over and Bash only. This will give you the most control and speed, but only if you can afford the keybind space. Then you'll want three different nature swiftness macros. One for healing touch, four for another for cyclone, and get from and then optionally one for hibernate. Next up, be sure to make a macro to automatically cast Innervate on yourself, no matter who you're targeting. 
Then you're gonna want some dispel macros. Two are gonna be for your teammates with party one, three, as and party two, and the final one will be for yourself. To increase your mobility, you can then make some power shifting macros for both travel form is because and cat form and optionally bear form. And just to be safe, you should also make a cancel form macro since power shifting prevents you from going into human form with a double press. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Before you go, though, be sure to check out Skill Capped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you're going to climb at least 400 rating when actively using our service. And, uh, well, if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.